Well, my Uncle Mike was a very big presence in my life and in my sister's lives because of the tragic circumstances of his loss. Well, he was born in Grudysk, Poland, and his name was Mozik Zanger, or Murray Zanger, but we knew him as Uncle Mike. These are some of the, uh, the records that my uncle uh, collected over his lifetime. Uh, he was a very big jazz buff. There are some really phenomenal records here. I mean, one of them is, is on the OK. I mean, some of these jackets are original jackets, as you can tell. They're uh, a little worse for wear. One of this is an OK record, Billy Holiday, but I guess he felt duty called and he joined up in uh, 1943 and he was very close with my mother. They hung around together a lot when they were kids. She talked a little bit about him, um, but just by the quantity of photographs around, I think, you know, she, I know she loved him very much. She was living with my youngest sister, Marcy, in North Hollywood. She passed away. At the time, my middle sister, Susan, was looking for information about our uncle. She found a link to Pacific Rex. I followed the link. All of the information that was published there was totally unknown. I saw a biography of Henry Cicada who wrote the story. We are embarking on the trip of a lifetime. We're traveling to Rabaul, New Britain, via Sydney, Australia, to Port Moresby, and Port Moresby to her ball. And we're going to be spending a week looking at the various areas. We're going to retrace the last months of my uncle's life. This Jewish cemetery in East Los Angeles holds a part of history that links this historian with these two sisters. Our mother lived her entire life mourning for her brother. Searching for answers about their uncle, Murray Zanger, a missing World War II fighter pilot, these women, along with their other sister, came across an article written by Henry Sakaida. The story that Henry wrote was called My Ten Year Search for Zanger. Through his research, Sakaida explains how Zanger was flying a plane like this back in December of 1944 when he accidentally collided with his wingman and had to parachute down into a remote jungle island in Papua New Guinea. He actually went out into the sea but unfortunately he was spotted by a Japanese patrol boat and he was captured and he became a prisoner of war and about two months before the war ended he was, uh, he was executed. Sakaida searched for years and finally discovered Zanger was buried and reburied four times, eventually ending up here at Home of Peace, a cemetery right next to the 710 freeway. We didn't know that he was 15 miles from where I lived. Sakaida closed the case in 1997. I used to leave um, post-it notes on this tombstone here, hoping that uh, some relative would drop by and you know, uh, call me, but they never did. But two years ago, these sisters discovered his article and eventually the gravesite. This is their final visit to their uncle's grave before a trip they plan to make to New Guinea to visit the remains of the plane their uncle flew 68 years ago. We can walk where he was. We can actually physically stand in the place that he was and, and document his plane and retrace his steps. Unbelievable. My uncle. She's just unbelievable. I can't. I just. I didn't know what was going to be. My uncle's plane. It's very sad. But I'm happy that we can see it. That he's not just lost, that there is something to remember, physically to remember him, and that he was a good patriot to his country. And thank you very much for clearing the way for us and for preserving this for us to be able to see. This is our uncle. Thank you.
This place is where he died. This was the end of his life. And it's devastating. I, I barely can, uh, you know, muster a smile here. You know, I mean, the people here are lovely and they've been so helpful. And um, it's, I just, part of me just wants to go. You know, I just want to go right. and uh, take this all with me. Okay, we're here on the uh, Tobeda airfield and we're amongst the uh, aircraft wreckages right here. Uh, around here, we don't know exactly where, but uh, Zanger was held um, near the um, Koryama uh, Military Police Detachment. He was kept in an open uh, air hut. There was a chain around his ankle, I suppose, and he was uh, basically a solitary prisoner until uh, what Ronnie Warren came later in the war, around maybe June or July of '45. So he was kept around here, and like I said, we don't know exactly where. And uh, he was uh, executed uh, maybe a month or two before the end of the war, and uh, he was buried near the uh, military police barracks. So after the war. Uh, some of the Japanese officers were interrogated about Zanger and uh, the alibi they gave was that he was shot while trying to escape. They said that uh, he attacked two guards, injured them, and uh, ran and uh, they, they shot him to death. But uh, when uh, the uh, American Graves Registration Team uh, uh, did a for forensic examination of his remains, you know, they found a lot of broken bones and fractures but no gunshot wounds. So um, uh, we believe that he was uh, beaten to death. In honor of Mike Zanger, we can have a moment of silence. Well, our uncle was a POW. And he was missing in action. And this is, we're part of that. Or we're part of the families who wanted to know what had happened to their relative.